Well, let me call our uh, second panel, uh, Dr. Eric Noji, Assistant Professor uh, of uh, Department of Emergency Medicine at Johns Hopkins, uh, along with Dr. Henry Siegelson, who is a uh, Professor of Emergency Medicine as well at Emory University, uh, and uh, uh, Chief Ronald Coleman, who is the President of the International Association of Fire Chiefs, uh, Chief Coleman is accompanied by Larry Green, who is the Deputy Fire Chief of Fullerton, California. Uh, welcome to our committee, gentlemen, and as uh, you've, you've been uh, informed, your written statements will be made part of the record, and please uh, feel free to focus uh, on uh, points that you would like to highlight that uh, would then stand out in the uh, transcripts of the hearing. Uh, and let's go uh, through the panel in the order to which I introduced you to the record. And so we'll start with Dr. Noji. Mr. Chairman and members of the subcommittee, uh, my name is Eric Noji. I'm an assistant professor of emergency medicine at the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine in Baltimore, Maryland. I will summarize some of the material contained in my full statement, which has been submitted for the record. I would like to address the current state of medical preparedness for earthquakes and what needs to be done to improve medical planning, preparedness, and response to earthquakes at the local, state, and federal levels using some of my observations in the Armenian earthquake to illustrate some of my comments here. First of all, what is being done at the federal level? For the past several years, the Federal Emergency Management Agency, that is FEMA, the chief federal agency responsible for disaster planning and preparedness at the national level, has consistently de-emphasized medical preparedness for natural disasters such as earthquakes in favor of nuclear civil defense planning. Although the Soviet Union has a well-developed system of nuclear civil defense, I cannot say that this fact improved the local communities or government's ability to respond effectively to the recent Armenian earthquake, particularly during the first chaotic 24 to 48 hours. In fact, the initial response of the authorities was characterized by tremendous confusion and disorganization. The lesson to be learned here for the U.S. is that preparation for a nuclear catastrophe may not prepare a community for the more likely event of a natural disaster such as an earthquake. It is clear that the best preparation for an event such as the catastrophic earthquake which recently occurred in Soviet Armenia is a well-developed everyday system of emergency health care. This clearly did not exist in Armenia prior to the earthquake. Despite this important lesson, it is interesting to note that FEMA consistently has de-emphasized the importance of emergency as well as disaster medical services and has refused to establish an emergency medical service division. In other words, there is no single point of contact for emergency or disaster medical services within FEMA. This has been a curious position taken by FEMA, particularly in light of the fact that emergency medical services are considered key elements in the federal government's civil defense preparedness documents. Despite the recognition that external assistance may take hours and perhaps even days to arrive, the federal government has no comprehensive strategy to train local responders for mass casualty response. To its credit, FEMA began two such efforts a few years ago, one aimed at improving disaster preparedness for pre-hospital responders, such as ambulance personnel, the other focusing on mass casualty care for hospital personnel. These efforts were extremely timely and well received by those of us in the medical community in this country. Unfortunately, FEMA discontinued these crucial activities in 1987 because they supposedly lacked relevance to nuclear civil defense. In the United States, there is no national agency uh, which effectively supports research into the health effects of earthquakes nor the treatment of earthquake-related injuries, as Dr. Kringold mentioned. There is currently no specific institute, for example, within the structure of the National Institutes of Health which would consider this area a research priority for potential funding. This lack of uh, funding sources at the federal level has been partially responsible for a general lack of an organized approach to earthquake research in the health sciences. What can be done to address the poor present state of medical planning and preparedness for earthquakes in this country? Number one, 
There needs to be a stronger central federal focus for disaster medical services in order to provide the necessary leadership and coordination for improved emergency medical response to mass casualty incidents and other disasters, there needs to be a single identifiable branch or office specifically dedicated to disaster medical services. As the chairing agency of the Federal Interagency Committee on Emergency Medical Services, this ideally would be located within the structure of the Federal Emergency Management Agency. Number two, there needs to be an increased federal emphasis on training of state and local health personnel in mass casualty management. State and local medical disaster preparedness is currently inadequate. Very few communities in the United States are even remotely prepared to deal with mass casualties. As a lead agency in the area of disaster preparedness, FEMA should shift its priorities toward developing local expertise in uh, topics such as heavy urban search and rescue, primarily by increasing the training capacity of its Emergency Management Institute in Emmitsburg, Maryland, and supporting state and local training efforts. The importance of the above local training efforts was borne out by our research in Armenia, which showed that 25% of those victims of building collapse who were severely injured and subsequently died, that is, those who died slowly, could have been saved if initial life-saving first aid had been rendered by uninjured bystanders immediately and if advanced trauma life support services could have arrived within six hours. Number three, sources of funding should be established at the federal level for research into the health effects of natural disasters such as earthquakes. In Armenia, thousands of persons were killed as a result of earthquake-induced building collapses. The specific mechanisms of death and injury and building collapse clearly need much more extensive research. What is specifically needed is for a federal agency such as FEMA, National Science Foundation, or the Department of Health and Human Services, for example, Centers for Disease Control, or the National Institutes of Health, to establish the framework for such a research program and to coordinate the multidisciplinary elements necessary to conduct good research into the health effects of natural disasters such as earthquake-induced building collapse. I recommend that a panel of subject matter experts from the federal and private sectors be created and convened to define the research priorities and make recommendations for promotion and funding. In conclusion, Mr. Chairman, the December 7, 1988 earthquake in Soviet Armenia was one of the most lethal in the 20th century in terms of morbidity, that is, injuries and mortality deaths. During my recent work in this country, I found that the Armenian government and its associated medical and health care community recognized that the establishment of a comprehensive, integrated, and well-organized national emergency medical system is necessary if they are to significantly reduce the tragic morbidity and mortality associated with future disasters. Furthermore, the government of Armenia is beginning to place significantly more importance on medical preparedness for disasters after reviewing the hard lessons of the recent catastrophe. These lessons are equally applicable to our own country, and our government should look long and hard at its, at, at its own present state of medical planning for disasters. Specifically, the federal government must establish a central focus for medical preparedness for natural disasters such as earthquakes, which will begin to build the four necessary components of such a new effort, that is, research and data collection, professional training, well-conceived local programs for medical preparedness for disasters, and coordination of federal, state, and local disaster programs. Certainly, we physicians and other members of the medical community in the United States, particularly in earthquake-prone regions, have taken a special interest in the lessons of, of our Armenian colleagues, for it, for it is we who will be called upon to care for hundreds, if not thousands, of patients when a major earthquake occurs. I thank you for the opportunity to appear before you and stand ready to answer any questions. Thank you, Dr. Noji. Uh, Dr. Siegelson. 